comes to mind when you think of a fungus? If it's a mushroom, that would be one group. But kingdom fungi also include molds, yeast, and these crusty fungal algal bodies called lichens that grow on trees, rocks, and buildings. Your relationship to fungi is more prevalent than you might think. There are edible mushrooms, antibiotics are made from penicillium molds, and perhaps you've dealt with a black mold issue in your home. Or maybe you've eaten foods made with fungi, such as breads, wines, cheeses, soy sauce, and, and much more. Regardless, there are over 100,000 known species of fungi, with many more yet to be discovered. Now, back in the old days, fungi were classified as plants, which makes sense since they grow out of the ground and, at least, with mushrooms, have visible stalks. However, fungi are much more closely related to animals, believe it or not. In fact, we share a eukaryote supergroup with them called the Opisticonta. That's because this supergroup has members that can produce a single flagellated cell. In animals, this is mostly sperm. And in one group of fungi, the spores have flagella. Fungi and animals are also the only life forms that produce chitin. Chitin is a carbohydrate used to make fungal cell walls and the hardened exoskeletons of arthropods like insects. Fungi do not undergo photosynthesis, but like animals, need to receive their energy and nutrients from other living things. Most fungi are saprobes in that they help with decomposition, but others can act as parasites, such as in yeast infections. They can also cause diseases in plants and animals. The once common American chestnut tree was almost eradicated by chestnut blight, a plant disease accidentally introduced by Chinese chestnuts, who have immunity to it. Fungal diseases are really hard to treat because their cells are so similar to ours. Antifungal drugs tend to target the cell wall and ergosterol, a similar molecule to cholesterol, but found only in fungi. While not as diverse as protists, fungi represent a monophyletic group. That is, they all share ancestry with one another. So allow this fun guy to take you on a tour through Kingdom Fungi. Like other eukaryotes, fungi have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. So how do they differ? They do not have chloroplasts, but they do have pigments on the surface cells to protect them from harmful UV radiation. This makes many so brightly colored like this fly agaric mushroom. Kind of looks familiar, doesn't it? Whatever you do, don't eat it. Fungi have cell walls, but they are made of chitin instead of cellulose, as they are in plants. Recall that chitin is also found in exoskeletons of many animals, which is one line of evidence of the relationship between fungi and animals. The plasma membrane is similar to other eukaryotes, except ergosterol helps provide strength to the cell membrane rather than cholesterol. Most fungi are non-modal, with only one group having some motility, the aquatic chytrids. When chytrids produce spores, they have flagella that can help them swim to an appropriate place to plant itself and grow. Most fungi are described as filamentous and have a vegetative body called a phallus. Some are completely unicellular and are generally called yeast. Others, like most mushrooms, are multicellular, and then some fungi are dimorphic in that they can have both forms depending on the environment they are in. Most fungi are multicellular and have two stages, vegetative and reproductive. The vegetative stage is made of fibrous thread-like structures called hyphae. A mass of hyphae is called a mycelium. The reproductive stage of a fungus is a lot more noticeable. In fact, that mushroom you see while walking in the woods is actually the organism's reproductive body. The vast majority of that organism is a network of mycelia underground. In fact, if you see many mushrooms growing closely together, they are likely all part of the same organism. In eastern Oregon lives the largest organism on the planet, the honey mushroom. The network of mycelia crosses 2,000 acres in the underground soil and is estimated to be 2,400 years old. Uh, sorry, but the mushrooms that it sprouts are about the same size as many of the ones you've already seen. Fungal hyphae are divided into cells by thick walls called septa. Like plasma desmata in plants, there are tiny holes in the septa to send materials and cell communication between each cell. One group of fungi do not have septa, but have hyphae with multiple nuclei. These are called coanacidic hyphae. Most fungi do best in slightly acidic conditions with or without light. Most require oxygen, but a few fungi live in digestive tracts of mammals with, which have no oxygen. 
Yeast can go either way, and while yeast prefer oxygen, they can survive without it and undergo fermentation to make ATP. We humans take advantage of yeast fermentation in the production of breads and alcoholic beverages since fermentation end products include carbon dioxide and ethanol. Fungi and animals are both heterotrophs, requiring nutrients and carbon from other living things by digestion. Animals first ingest food and digest it internally using digestive organs. Fungi grow on their food, secrete digestive enzymes outside of their cells to break it down and then absorb it through the filamentous mycelia. The high surface area of that mycelia allows fungi to efficiently absorb nutrients in many decaying organisms. Most fungi are saprobes, which essentially decomposes living things. These organisms, utilizing special enzymes, are able to break down both cellulose, which makes plant cell walls, and lignin, which helps to strengthen those cell walls to allow for more vertical growth. Decomposition is so important to life as dead things have locked nutrients inside. Fungi, bacteria, and decomposing protists help to unlock those nutrients and replenish them into the soil. Most of the carbon in dead things gets converted into carbon dioxide gas. Like protists, fungi taxonomy still needs some work with upwards of six to seven different phyla. Now in fungi and plants, we call these phyla divisions. So here are the five major divisions of fungi. Chytridiomycota, which are known as the chytrids, the only group with modal cells. Zygomycota, or coanocytic fungi, in that they have multinucleated cells with no septa. Black bread mold is a well-studied example. Ascomycota, or sac fungi, in which they utilize a special sac to help make spores. These include many cup fungi, yeast, penicillium, which is the origin of penicillin antibiotics, and the fungal portions of lichens, which I'll talk about later. Basidiomycota, or club fungi, utilize a special club structure to help make spores and represent much of the mushrooms that you see. And the last group is glomeromycota, which produce certain types of mycorrhizae, or specialized hyphae that surround plant roots and help assist in nutrient absorption. Fungi can have negative effects on medicine and agriculture. Some plant fungal parasites do not directly affect human health, but can decimate crop yields, causing famine. And some fungi can produce toxins that can hurt humans and others simply by spoiling our food. One species, Claviceps purpurea, causes ergo, which affects cereal crops, especially rye. Not only does it reduce crop yields, but eating infected crops can cause convulsions, hallucinations, and gangrene. It was thought that many of the witches in the British American colonies were victims of ergotism, as it made them crazy and thus accused of being witches. Weren't the old days fun? Other plant diseases that reduce crop yields include corn smut and downy mildew affecting grapes. Some of the most dangerous of fungal toxins come from aspergillus molds. They infect nuts and grains, producing aflatoxins, which are cancer-causing. Of course, animals and humans can be directly affected by fungal parasites and pathogens, eating poisonous mushrooms or contaminated plants, and affecting people with mold allergies. Fungal infections are difficult to treat because the medications do not differentiate between your cells and fungal cells because both cell types are so similar, being eukaryotic. You may have had a fungal mycosis or skin infected with fungi. This includes athlete's foot, jock itch, and ringworm. Yes, that last one is not caused by a worm, but a ring-like fungus. Fortunately, since the outer layer of skin is dead, it is easy to treat these infections with over-the-counter antifungal medications. Some fungal diseases can spread inside of the body. Both valley fever and histoplasmosis are caused by breathing in the spores of these organisms. Valley fever can mimic tuberculosis, and histoplasmosis can cause severe pneumonia and central nervous system damage if untreated. Unfortunately, these diseases are really hard to treat as the drugs involved have serious side effects. Like I said earlier, our cells and fungal cells are very similar. Some fungi are opportunistic pathogens in that they wait until the person's immune system is weakened before infection. 
These species are already found in your microbiome, but if conditions are unfavorable, they can populate, causing an infection. Candida albicans causes yeast infections in the mouth, throat, and vagina of humans. Yeast infections are usually caused by abrupt changes in pH, lowered immunity, or using broad-spectrum antibiotics that kill off candida's competition, allowing it to flourish. But don't worry, fungi are also beneficial, if not crucial, to other life forms. For starters, they are major decomposers for many ecosystems, even in cold regions like the Arctic tundra. They also serve as food for many different animals. Fungi evolved the ability to produce special enzymes to digest lignin, which helps make wood, and cellulose, which help makes plant cell walls. This aids them in decomposition of dead or dying plants, recycling nutrients locked inside back into the soil for the next generation of plants. And as mentioned earlier, mycorrhizae are a fungal relationship with plant roots. In fact, 90% of plants have some mycorrhizal relationship and studies have shown that growth with these fungal partners is better than growth without. The filamentous hyphae of the fungus increases the surface area of absorption for the plant root to increase mineral absorption while providing sugars to the fungi. There are two types of mycorrhizae. Ectomycorrhizae form a filamentous network of hyphae around root cells and belong to pretty much all other groups of fungi except glomeromycota. Phylum glomeromycota tends to form endomycorrhizae, which is hyphae that grow inside of root cells. Some fungi are endophytes in that the fungal cells grow in, inside of the plant cells but don't harm them. Instead, these fungi produce a toxin that repels herbivores from eating the plants or just making the plants taste extremely bitter. Animals can eat fungi and then defecate those spores in other locations. Fungal spores are resistant to animal digestive enzymes, with some fungi requiring interaction with these enzymes and feces to complete their life cycles. Truffles are an ectomycorrhizal fungus of many trees, with animals eating them and dispersing the spores. In fact, these fungi are prized in culinary, and some countries use female pigs to find and dig for them since truffles produce a compound that closely resembles a male pheromone made by those male pigs. <laughs> Lichens get their own sort of attention, which is a relationship between a sac or club fungus and an algae or cyanobacterium. Regardless, neither member of this partnership can survive without the other. The lichen's body is called a thallus and is made of fungal cells wrapped around the photosynthetic organism. The fungus protects the photosynthetic partner from excessive light and drying out and attaches the lichen to the substrate while the photosynthetic partner provides carbon and energy for the lichen. Lichens are an example of a bioindicator, which is an organism that can help scientists determine the level of air pollution in an area. More lichens is indicative of better air quality since they are so sensitive to it. Lichens also act as food for many tundra mammals, cover for small invertebrates, and have been used in the production of textiles, dyes, and litmus paper. Beyond disease and food spoilage, Humans depend a lot on fungi. Not only are they a food source by directly eating mushrooms, but they can also be used to make cheeses, beer, wine, and spirits. Some fungi are even being researched as biological pesticides, including destroying the invasive emerald ash borer, which has devastated our native ash trees. While wild yeast and bacteria have been used in the fermentation of alcoholic beverages and bread making for centuries, the discovery of Saccharomyces cerevisiae allowed for a safe and reliable microorganism to carry out baking and brewing from the 1850s until today. Fungi are the source of many of our antibiotics, steroids, and, and an immunosuppressant drug called cyclosporine, which reduces the risk of rejection during organ transplants. Of course, who could forget the fun drugs? Like psilocybin. There is so much more stuff to learn about fungi, but I don't have mushroom <laughs> to cover it all. So next time you are out and about, I hope you stop and observe this strange yet important part of life on Earth. And up next, we will look at another important eukaryotic kingdom, plants.